But alas, I mustn't tell you. No, it wouldn't be right. Well, why not, my boy? It's only half past eleven, and you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very well, then. It is my duty as a pirate to tell you that, well, you're too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course, we are orphans ourselves. We know what it is. Yes, but it's got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> the last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. We had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from the orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. Oh, but hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. There's my difficulty. Until twelve I would, after twelve I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth? Your Ruth, whom you love so well, who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart? Oh, what's to become of her? Ha! He will take you with him. <laughs> well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It's true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen during that time. Now, I think it's a sweet face. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, I think it is. As I've never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it's just possible I may be mistaken. Uh, true. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this, this innocent creature and then find out that she is, on the whole, plain. Oh, uh, Ruth is uh, very well, very well indeed. Yes. There are the remains of a fine woman about you. <laughs> do you really think so? I do. <laughs> then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. No, in justice to her and in consideration to you, I leave her behind. Oh, no, Frederick, uh, this must not be. Uh, we are rough men who lead a rough life, but we would not be so utterly heartless as to deprive her of thy love. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this uh, inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! Uh, no, I thought there wasn't. <laughs> uh, keep thy love, Frederick, keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. Uh, when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you all, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. <coughs> I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. <laughs> no, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> Black flag I fly, then play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head and a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you, where pirates all are well to do. But I'll be true to the song I sing and live and die. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are the pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is the rough a pirate king. Oh, no. 
Thomas Classroom. If he wants to call his clown his own, must manage somehow to get through more dirty work than ever. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a pilot king. Well, I am a pilot king. You are, you are a pilot king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pilot king. Well, I am a pilot king.
this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. I had intended 
not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sussman? I am a pirate. A pirate? Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind
I can tell at sight a muscle rifle from a javelin. When such a pair of sorties and surprises, I'm more aware of that. And when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat. When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery. When I know more of tactics than a novice in a novel. In short, when I'm a smattering of elemental strategy. You all said it. Um, yes, you'll say a bit of Major General Brown and never sat. Say a bit of Major General Brown and never sat. Say a bit of Major General Brown and never sat. Say a bit of Major General Brown and never sat. For my military knowledge, though unpacking yet adventure, has only been worked out at the beginning of the century. But still, it matters vegetable, animal, and mineral. I have a remodel of the modern Major General Brown. The city has a vegetable, animal, and mineral. He is a very model of a modern Major General.
If I hadn't an elegant diction, indulged in an innocent fiction, which is not in the same category as doing a regular telling story. It's a story, 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 it's a
try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? To escape the pirate's clutches. I described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I'm no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors, to implore their pardon for having brought disgrace on the family escutcheon. But you forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago. The stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. <laughs> I don't know what, whose ancestors they are, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their heir, by, by purchase, if I may so describe myself, <coughs> should have brought dishonor on what I no doubt was a, an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these, these reckless men would assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is under me. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous? At what time do your gallant band march against these scum? At eleven. And by midnight I hope to have atoned for my involuntary <coughs> association with these pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. And are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. <laughs> then, Frederick, let your escort lie hearted. <laughs> His son to receive a general's blessing. There they part upon the dread adventure. Dear sir, they Thank you. 
risks that I must press, and the reference a lack to our chance of coming back. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to gobble with his side, for it's very evident these intentions are well meant. Yes, it's very evident these intentions are well meant. Evident, yes, well meant. Evident, ah, oh, yes, well meant. Very likely the astronomer royal 
has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. But through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in Libya on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> And seem. Yes, yes, with yours my fingers do agree. <laughs> <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox, and common sense she gaily mocks. Though counting in the usual way is twenty-one, I feel alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yes, reckoning by my natal day, one, two, three, four, five. I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> a paradox, <laughs> a curious paradox. <laughs> Night, 
my vengeance style Shall glut itself be drawn away, away Away, away, ere I expire I find my duty hard to do today My heart is filled with anguish dire It strikes me to the core, away, away With wolves and foully tricked as all that night Let vengeance all the pirates are beside An anxious stern is softened with his lies And in return tonight the traitor dies Yes, 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 tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. His nerves might rise. No one will sorrow. No one's a spot. The leaders will cherish. And all who plot. To abuse each other. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. Yes, girls might fight with mercy in sorrow. No one's a spot. The leaders will cherish.
We should have thought of that before we joined the force. <laughs> we should. It's too late now. It is. When a fair 
Burns not engaged in his employment. His employment. Maturing his melodious little plan. Little plan. His capacity for innocent enjoyment. Self enjoyment. Just as great as any honest man. Honest man. Proud he is with his difficult mother. Cruelty mother. When constabulary duties to be done. To be done. Must take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Enterprising burglar's not a burglar. Not a burglar. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime. Hiding crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling. Brook a gurgling. And listen to the merry village chime. Village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother. On his mother. He loves to lie basking in the sun. In the sun. I take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one.
general comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes, the major general comes. Yes, yes, the major general comes. Yes, yes, the major general comes. Tormented with the anguished dread of falsehood unatoned, I lay upon my sinless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache, no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. I would if I could, but I am no 
Oh! 